Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryan, everybody watching us live on Twitch. How's it going? <laughs> Pretty big show. Pretty big show for you this week. Yeah. We got React OS is back from the dead. Firefox mm -hmm. is getting acceleration. A cautionary tale about the latest YouTuber special. Something we talked about last week. Stick around a little bit later. I'll tell you about that. And a Blackberry, not Blackberry, high powered <laughs> device with a keyboard that can run ASCII Doom. ASCII Doom all the way. <laughs> because that's important. Man, I've been scrambling okay. around. If you get a chance to watch the pre show or you hang out in our Discord or in live chat, the uh, thing on Wednesdays now is like severe thunderstorm warning before <laughs> always <laughs> weekly daily wednesdays this is a time-honored tradition around this time of the year i'm like this week too yeah this week too power blinks and all that fun stuff but we made it we're here yes one thing i want to get some feedback on is uh you know last week we talked about you know alma and rocky how they were going to go forward they didn't you know really disclose what they were gonna do they're like yeah. we got a way around this and Rocky had a post earlier this week. Like we're going to be spooling up cloud instances to kind of work around like a little legal loophole, or not legal, but you know, a service loophole to make sure everybody can still get a hold of the sources. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be kind of interesting to watch. Still waiting to see what Alma's going to do and how all of this unfolds. And um, oh, what else am I doing? I got a fun little video coming up probably tomorrow, maybe on Friday. We were talking about that a little bit earlier. If you use MPV Media Player, especially if you use it on older systems, and I said older systems and Jill, and Jill means, oh, you mean like, you know, 286s, right? And I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I think Jill 486 said 486s. Is, yeah, I, I'm talking like <laughs> 10, 11, 12-year-old CPUs. I'm going to show you how to give it quite the speed boost. And for those of you with modern CPUs, especially if you use MPV, you're going to go, wait a minute. It wasn't doing that. And I'm like, no, it wasn't. So stay tuned for that. How about you, Joe? What's up and what's new? You were mildly cranky. Yeah, I guess this is kind of unusual for me, but it turns out that that for those of us who use TweetDeck, we're going to have to pay Twitter now to use TweetDeck. And I kind of saw that coming down the road, but it just... It happened at the wrong time. They launched it July 4th, <laughs> so I guess people wouldn't notice. <laughs> and they updated the user interface, and you had to re-log in. And as a result, I lost all my connections with all the accounts that I tweet on as, you know, a social media manager and uh, at Destination Linux. And I do that a bit here on LWW. <laughs> So it's, <laughs> it was, uh, so trying to get all those accounts back and now I'm going to have to, to pay to use it. It's just, uh, it's just annoying. <laughs> so one thing about TweetDeck, especially when we think about Twitter, is for the entire time Twitter's been around, I've thought to myself, I'm like, how is this free? Because you didn't get ads on it. You didn't yeah. see any of the marketing yeah. stuff. It was very effective. That's the only way I browsed Twitter for men uh, on desktop. I think since I found out it exists and like, I have not had, I've not understood trying to monetize Twitter with the uh, verified or like Twitter blue or whatever it's called. Yeah. Yeah. Like that doesn't make any <laughs> sense to me. And the other stuff like monetizing tweet deck. I'm like, that's going to get some people. Because some yeah. people just can't function and do what they need to do without that. However, let me remind everybody, Mastodon exists. Mm -hmm. Like, you got options. I can't necessarily get upset about this because I kind of, my heart's been broken. Google Plus, you broke my heart. I don't. I know. I, that was our favorite. <laughs> I don't have attachments <laughs> to social media networks. Never have. Some people got some very unhealthy attachments to social media networks, and it shows. But. For mm -hmm. me, I'm like, what, when we think about social media, where did, what would I, I think like the first modern incarnation of social media for me was probably MySpace. You know, we're not going back oh, to like yeah. BBS, we're talking about modern, you know, web-based. Yeah, modern, yeah. <laughs> probably MySpace, and I think we migrated over 
to uh, the Facebook, which later became Facebook. Then your parents showed up on Facebook and like, we need to go somewhere else. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> then I moved over to Google Plus. Then Google Plus shut down. I'm like, well, I guess uh, we'll hang out on Twitter. Then we did the Mastodon thing. Like, I'll just bounce around because I use yeah. social media as a data collection primarily for these shows. So, mm-hmm. yeah, mass.linuxgamecast.com. You can come follow both of us. Yeah, on absolutely. Our instance. <laughs> um, did you guys have any fireworks or anything? It was the 4th of July yesterday. Yeah. We were trying to, yeah. you know, peacefully fly off tracks during our track mania practice session. Yeah. There was explosions going on everywhere. <laughs> absolutely. There wasn't too much here because our, our community were not allowed to do fireworks. Uh, but uh, uh, because I am near foothills, that could catch on fire. So <laughs> that's. One of the things, but we have our, our local events at the, at the, at the beach, at the pier and, and in our town of, of Torrance, we have, have, they have their big fireworks shows. So I hear all those. And then we do hear the fireworks from people's homes mm. that, that live inland where they do allow fireworks, where right. there's no trees. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so I do hear that, but it was pretty actually quiet for us. It was right. quieter than, than average, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't too crazy here last night. I was expecting it to get a bit uh, boomy, but, eh, you know, just your average yeah. amount yeah. of celebration. So, <laughs> But yeah, I hope everyone in the U.S. had a nice 4th of July and a wonderful four-day holiday weekend. I I really enjoyed it. I just relaxed with my husband, who was still recovering from being sick, but it was nice to just spend time with him. Right on. Right on. Let's get into it, everybody. React OS. Have you heard about React OS? It's been around for a minute. Yeah. For a absolutely. minute. It's been around <laughs> longer than some of you have been alive. But it's back from the dead. And it's back from the dead to basically remind everybody, hey, we're not dead, by the way. So what is it? Let's just pretend you never heard about it. All right. It's a rewrite of Windows 2000 XP, kernel space, and user space. Plus, they've thrown some code in from the Wine Project, just kind of speed up the development. It's pretty decent. Seven months have gone by and people have walked in like it's gone. They're not doing anything. Mm. And fair enough, seven months, that's a long time since the last report. You know, last yeah. blip, if you don't follow the nightlies and see the stuff here just from the outside. Well, they had to change the release schedule because previously they'd went to a three-month schedule. And they're like, you know what? Turns out that's not sustainable. We're not going to be able to pull that off. So... We got the latest bits, a couple of things. Uh, X64 is the big one in this. So mm. it's seen some improvements, some applications, 64-bit applications. They even run, which is kind of amazing. Some applications and hardware drivers. Hardware drivers, you don't think about that because they're, you know, they're basically building Windows here. You get those drivers up and running as well. However, uh, there's no backwards support for 32-bit applications if you're going to be running the 32-bit. This is one of those projects that I've always looked at look at this you can run sonic 2 on it now how much would you pay it's free it's open source <laughs> so nothing everybody there's putty i haven't seen that in a long time react Daddy. os oh man virtual pc 2007 we have hex editor.exe yeah there's vlc in there somewhere too <laughs> oh there is awesome yeah linter desktop and so why would you need a project like this preservation for like older machines or you need an older environment to run that particular version of um you know be it xp or whatnot there's a better chance of getting it up and running with react os yeah and i'm glad it's still alive and you know what this is a lot of work and it takes a lot of time to get things done right yeah i mean i it I think it's cool that there's still an OS that looks like Windows 95 and Windows 98. <laughs> so that's really cool. Uh, and uh, they've actually uh, done some improvements on the Paint and Notepad apps. And they've done lots of quality of life improvements and lots of fixes. And it's really good news to hear that the React OS project is now focusing on providing quality releases instead of quantity. And uh, instead of trying to aim for a, re- a release every three months with a small team of developers, I think that was a smart, smart move. And it's nice to have an alternative to Microsoft Windows that isn't Windows, but you can run Windows apps in. <laughs> That's fabulous. 
I still have Ra- React OS on one of my machines. There, there's I, one reason yeah. to spool it up in a VM, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> that reason? So you can play around with Media Player Classic. Come on. Ah, there you go. M- yeah, Media Player. <laughs> oh, 2002, 2017. How many viruses were inflicted <laughs> upon the populace of people downloading Kodak packs trying to get videos to play because of that stupid media player. Yeah, and ActiveX. <laughs> and, um, I just, oh, I've cleaned out so many machines back in the day. I'm like, what yeah. is this super sketchy Kodak pack.exe? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I found where the attack vector was. Uh, excellent project. Glad they keep it up. Where's the desktop? That was always the thing back in the day, though. Even like back in the um, 95, 2000, I, I Saw more people on Linux trying to get their desktops to look like Mac than Windows. Yeah, this is true. That always seemed to like be the big push. And they're like, oh, yeah. look at that. I like the OS X. Because I know we were simple creatures back then. We, we wanted but our docs. <laughs> the Remember, no, it might even do today. It's been so long since I've touched a Mac, uh, how it would scale the icons when you moused over. Yeah. That yeah. was a, That's a b- thing. <laughs> big plug in in a KDE back in the day and it was completely impractical to use it because you used so much resources to do it but it was yeah ooh, look at it <laughs> now it you can do time. it really seamlessly and and all the docs that are available on linux they have that functionality <laughs> I would, uh, each to their own um what else <laughs> we got oh firefox yeah so this is really cool uh mozilla released firefox version 155.0 yesterday and it comes with many many new features and those of us in the linux community will love a, a lot of these new features including hardware video decoding is now enabled for intel gpus on linux this is awesome 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 and this this works with uh intel i gotta APUs. save you the, i gotta save you the comment joe if somebody's going to be like, well, actually, Dylan, you can do hardware acceleration on an Intel GPUs and Firefox. Um, like, yes, but now you don't have to go into the about and like flip a bit. Yeah, in the flip config a bit. File. Yeah, in the config file, which we had to do for Average ages. person's not going to do that. Yeah, you know, it's been like that for a long time where you had to go enable it <laughs> in the system settings. And uh, also, uh, the video acceleration. Um, Regarding video acceleration, Firefox 115 is now supporting Cisco's Open H.264 plugin for platforms lacking H.264 video decoding. That is really nice because there are many a Linux user that uh, needed plugins <laughs> to play videos using the Firefox web browser. And sometimes they could be a little tricky to get or installed. <laughs> so this way you have another option. <laughs> That's that's really nice. There's an open source option now. And Firefox 115 also adds support for migrating payment methods saved in Chrome into Firefox. And that's really good news because I'm constantly going back and forth between different browsers. And that's, uh, you know, very, very nice. And you also on Linux, you can middle click on the new tab button which will open the X clipboard contents in the new tab. And what's cool is if the X clipboard content is in an URL, then that URL is opened and any other text is opened with your default search provider. So something they, they thought about us at Linux users <laughs> then. That, this is exciting. I mean, this was after remembering that they had a web browser they should update. Yes. <laughs> yes. And there's also a new extended support release of Firefox, which is a Firefox ESR 115, which will be supported until September 2024. And I want to thank the lovely Pedro for bringing the Firefox update to our attention. This is just exciting news. Unless, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> my brothers and sisters out there that are just stubborn, because <laughs> you know you're out there, probably listening to show right now. If you're running Windows in 7, the Windows in 8, or the Mac OS in 10, this is the last version you're getting. This is it. Yeah. We got to cut you off. All right. It's a problem. It's intervention. They're, they're stepping in. They're like, okay, 
we got to take these uh, unsupported operating systems that are not getting security patches away from you. You're like, no, and you're going to stick around. There's probably, I haven't seen the copy of XP, somebody running XP in a long time. <laughs> yeah. But I do know somebody <laughs> running Windows 7 today, and yes. they, they still defend it. I'm like, no, this is the best. I'm like, okay, fine, fine. <laughs> I'm not, you cannot argue with this type of person. Just let them do what they need to do. But you're going to be running um, ESL from now on. But, you know, I, I'm sure you'll be able to find uh, Firefox.supersketchy.exe to run on yeah. Windows 7 and 8. <laughs> it's open yes. source. Maybe somebody will work around it. Always good to see Mozilla remember that Firefox exists and do some stuff with it. Because I yeah, consider that their absolutely. core product. And I want all the attention and focus and effort to go into Firefox. And that's where I am with my love for Firefox. Because mm -hmm. we've seen yeah. it. Like start from nothing, it got big, then it got bad, then no one used it. They're, they're working back up. They're working yeah, back up. Yeah, they Hopefully are working they back up. It's still one of the most secure web browsers around, and it's open source. So we got to keep supporting it to get better and better. And the video acceleration is always uh, hardware decoding. Has always boggled me why that wasn't, because have you ever yeah. enabled it on a system and it not worked? <laughs> oh boy <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm serious like it, I mean the first thing you, you get Firefox you, you start scrolling around I'm like why is this so chuggy like, oh right I need to enable it and if it works every time yeah yeah <laughs> so I don't know what the hesitation was to get it enabled but hey it is yeah. if you are on the Intels good news everybody yeah nice to play those 4k YouTube and, and <laughs> YouTube videos <laughs> and Vimo. 4K. We got to play 8K now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like how the industry has like nibbled at like the prospect of selling consumers 8K and like 8K hey, is the next thing. And pretty much all of us went. Now we're good. 4K. 4K is nice. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it kind of came to a grinding halt outside of like some specialty monitors outside of like Apple and Dell. They they have some 6K yeah. monitors. Yeah. I wouldn't turn down a 6K monitor just because I'm on the screen real estate, but yeah, it seems like 4K is our happy spot. Pretty decent. It really is, yeah. Unfortunately, there's some people not in a happy spot right now. The Go XLR developers, the people who make this thing work. We talked about it last week. What is it? It's the modern day YouTuber special. We were talking about it in the pre-show. It's not particularly a great piece of hardware but they did a good job on the software to give you access like a swear button voice modifications and things like that and a couple of faders and a couple of scribble strips it's about a hundred dollars worth of hardware that they've been selling for 400 bucks and all right that's fine but they got a little update uh let me see if i can find here it is yeah the software team in uh, Canada, I got a notification. I, I, you guys are gone. We're not uh, going to be doing software updates. We don't have any additional information for you, and we're not even sure if it's going to be transferred to another team. Mm -hmm. So, so it's just like poof. And I'm we're talking like out of nowhere. Yeah, this was out a complete nowhere, surprise, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, there are no longer any TC. Uh, and this was posted in their Discord. Um, support might be moving to a different uh, TCH team, but they haven't heard anything before they will let go. They just kind of showed up and said, you're gone. Yeah. And this is damaging in two different ways. One, the reason I brought up the, how they did such an excellent job with the software for consumers, mind you, you know, and that's what I think they did a good job for. They made it accessible. You know, some of the, because I, I look at that, like, I can do all that stuff here myself. It's not a problem, but I couldn't take somebody off the street and like here. But what they've done is like, you know, packed a lot of that functionality in something a consumer can use. Go XLR is a brick without that software. It does nothing. Mm -hmm. Now, the one thing that really caught me here was in the Discord posts, the employees they're like, yo, if this thing's going to be continued, what I want everyone to do is go to the Go XLR on Linux, Go XLR utility, the open source one we talked about yes. last week, <laughs> and download that. Why should you, if you're listening to me right now, 
go do that because the software is not maintained as of yesterday. There is a lot of people with the Go XLRs on the market right now. Yeah. You know what I'm doing? If I'm looking for attack vectors to spread some malware, I'm thinking about that right there. I'm like, that that's something I want to start poking at because that's not getting updates anymore. That might be where I'm. Mm -hmm. Go download the Go XLR utility, if you're special if you're on Windows, on Mac. You're not safe anymore on Linux. You didn't have it in the first place. So you already have the Go XLR utility installed. You don't have to worry about those original drivers. And this is a cautionary tale. You know, I didn't expect it to hit, you know, last week when I was talking about this, how important, like, you might not think about it. And I, I don't like um, having projects require reverse engineering. Now, apparently behind the scenes, they were kind of working with these guys a little bit. You know, mm, like sliding them nice. some details under this. Yeah. And, but having that information publicly available, you know, by hook or by crook, however you got to get it with open source drivers. If Go XLR, which by all accounts right now has just went poof, that device, you're still going to be able to use it. You're going to be yeah. able to use it on Linux. You're still going to be able to use it on Windows. You're going to be able to use it on Mac for the foreseeable future. So this is why this is that important. You know, when, when I bring that up, I'm not just talking. You know, but if you take anything from what I just said, if you know somebody with one of these, get them off the official drivers yesterday. Because people are going to be coming for them. Yeah. <laughs> you hear that, Linus Sebastian from Linus Tech Tips? <laughs> now the Linux drivers will save you. <laughs> Or go XLR. I want you to go to their GitHub page, <laughs> save yes. the page. It's a web HTML file. <laughs> Double click on it a few times, install a font, whatever you got to do. <laughs> Listen, I, I don't give that kid, he's not a kid, he's a couple years younger than me, a hard time because he's just working off his script, okay? Yeah. That's what the yeah. writers wrote down for him to do. <laughs> oh, I know, right? Now I'm going to tell you all the reality shows aren't real. Um, Hey. <laughs> what then <laughs> we got to thank the people who make this show possible every one of you out there supporting us over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast letting us do what we do how we want to do it which you know each to their own but at least you know we're being honest we got to thank one of our beautiful party patrons this week Joe who's increased their pledge yeah Nubbin Nubbin is now a Chicago level person in he's, our patreon he's the deep dish pizza <laughs> yes he is <laughs> he's, he's the lasagna of pizza oh thank you nubbin it's a, it's a joy uh you know playing track mania with him i i love nubbin he's I like one nubbin. of my favorite yeah nubbin's great <laughs> nubbin's got capacity it's like i'm gonna figure this game out man yes Rocking and <laughs> doing all that and i did mention last week maybe i'll mention again this week we've updated support page so we got everything there. If you want to, you know, kick us a few shekels, mm -hmm. we would very much appreciate it. We can do the Patreon, LibrePay, PayPal, one-time donations. We got all of our wish lists. I got one. Jill's got one. Studio's got one. Jordan's got one. Um, Pedro's got one. We got a merch store. I brought back something we had at Amazon Storefront. So if you're looking for anything that's in the studio, you can go find all the information there. Humble affiliate. I've updated. Look, look what's back. <gasps> our weekly daily oh, Wednesday shirt. Wonder. Yay, Ben! Yay! I was just thinking, I need a hoodie. <laughs> Some LWW hoodie. <laughs> this guy is uh, back in stock because Good. they got the t-shirt that I liked the way it was printed on. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it's back, so we're good to go. I guess because of the pandemic thing, whatever they had, yeah. sourcing issues. If you get anything from our store, store.lennoxgamecast.com, 30-day free return policy. And you're wondering, how come all of our prices aren't like, you know, $29 for a t-shirt? Yeah. Because I want you to wear the stuff. I want you to wear the stuff out and about. I don't want, I, we're not trying to get rich on you here at all. And um, I do got a new sticker. So if you've ever thought about like yeah, I see that. bossy <laughs> stickers, if you ever need to put a device in obey me mode, you can use one of our bossy <laughs> stickers. If you got a laptop that's not working, you take that, you put it on there, put it in obey me mode. <laughs> You'll be the blue hat. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Yes. And of course, we got our elks, we got Franks, and yeah, everything's been updated. Yay. That I like. And oh, I'm so happy, Ben. I'm going to get another LWW shirt. I have two of them. So I could use another one. That's uh, if you just uh, <laughs> accidentally buy 
I think like 380 stickers, I'll be able to get that epic motherboard. So don't. Steve, oh, okay. If you, if you see that Jill's <laughs> bought like 380 stickers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we thank you for your support. Come hang out with us. We got a bunch of bonus things that we throw in. If you can support us on Patreon, uh, if you like what we do during this show and you don't catch the live show and you want that in like an edited podcast, not edited, but you know, the ends chopped off. You want to relive that live experience. We got that going down video version too. And one thing I was thinking about, cause you know, I've had, I've been sitting like trying to think of a uh, Patreon gave us access to video that we can just have on Patreon, but I've never been able to think like what to do with it. And I've had that for months and months and months. One thing I like knowing that it's there is if, did you see what YouTube is doing? Mm. YouTube's doing like a three strike thing. They're just going to cut you off from video if you're using ad blockers. Yeah. Mm. Like they're <laughs> not playing around. They're like, mm, you can disable the ad blocker or we're just not going to show you in video. And before you uh, want to jump into the local, we're going to get away around it, cat and mouse. I was reading through the comments, people involved in ad tech on Hacker News, maybe a month or two ago. There's no cat and mouse game, people. There's none. Like there, there, there's, you're not going to be fighting this. They've already solved this problem. They've just been hesitant to pull the switch on it. Oh. Like there, there, <laughs> there's no plugin that's going to get around this stuff. Yeah. Um, so one thing I was thinking about for patrons, I'll, uh, if it gets that bad, if we get to like some YouTube apocalypse, I'll just put the A version of the video for the show and, uh, Linux team cast up on, let's go watch it that way. No, it's oh, higher nice. quality. Yeah. Hopefully we don't have to do that. <laughs> That'd be awesome. But we'll we'll just see how that plays out. Come hang out with us in our Discord. We're always going the other six days of the week. And you know, we do game streams, bunch of stuff. I'm gonna be doing a um live build, a couple of live builds. Like the first one I completely forgot we're gonna be building like a little test bench, a retro test bench. And by retro I mean yeah. it's uh AM four. Yeah, AM4. That, that's retro, right? <laughs> yeah, <That's laughs> it is now. <laughs> yeah, there's something new around, but it's got yeah. a PCI slot on it. So basically, it's an excuse to see how bad the $24 Amazon test bench is and how flexible and folly it is. That'll be a fun time. <laughs> cool. All right. Last but not least is a little bit of Raspberry Pi nonsense. Yeah. So this is actually a cool Raspberry Pi powered Blackberry like handheld that I had discovered a few weeks ago called Beatberry. <laughs> and a Raspberry Pi Zero W powers the Beatberry portable computing device. And you can use Beatberry as a straightforward pager, running iMessage, WhatsApp, and so on. Or I want to play this video because <laughs> this is the Star Wars ASCII demo. Star Wars ASCII, yes. Come or you could me, use it Mickey, to do that. Bring it <laughs> yes. to Disney Suzas. No. <laughs> and you can also use this, of course, as a hackable cyber deck device off the grid. And, um, of course, you can run any Linux application that runs on a Raspberry Pi. And in, including Vin. You can run ASCII Doom, <laughs> which is really, really cool. I've run ASCII Doom myself <laughs> before, and it's it's a whole lot of fun because it actually works pretty well. And, and and by run we mean run. If you've ever run, like, <laughs> I want little... you I want you to think like four eighty six SX. Yes, <laughs> with a black and white monitor. Um, yeah. But it actually is refreshing halfway decent between the frames. I was quite amazed by that. <laughs> so for, for such a low-powered device. But it's doing a good job. God, you remember back in, in the day <laughs> when I used to try and get uh, my ASCII videos to play in Terminal on my 386s and 486s and get the best quality, <laughs> sometimes using the AA Lib or the CACA Lib. <laughs> that was a <the> thing. <laughs> But anyways, to build this beautiful uh, Beatberry device, you, you need a Raspberry Pi Zero W, Adafruit's Sharp Memory 2.7 inch LCD display, a Blackberry looking tactile keyboard with a touchpad. And if you look in the show notes, there's um, a link to where you can get one of those. Um, LED, LEDs for notifications. 
um, a LiPo battery and an onboard RP2040 MCU. And the, the sad thing is, is you could buy a Beepberry already put together, but the page currently says 404 page not found. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully- I, I was about to say that too. If you've <laughs> been watching the video version, I'm like, where can you buy this thing, man? Yeah. So hopefully this will be fixed soon. And honestly, my guess is that the SQFMI shop is out of stock of the beat berries. That's maybe why it's 404 page not found. I'm not That's sure. That's optimistic, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I'm oh, hoping. we're out of stock. Oh, remove the page. I know. It was it was a little odd. They maybe they got overwhelmed with all the press they've been getting. And they have been getting a lot of press in the last last month. <laughs> so <laughs> that's I'm hoping they will bring that back, and uh, you could you could probably find out by going to the Beatberry community um, on their Discord channel. So I, I'm sure they talk about it there. <laughs> yeah, I'm like looking around. Like, um, do they? Where's their GitHub page for these things? That's what I'm trying to track down. Docs. Let's see. Uh, Raspberry Pi software hardware. Tax spec schematic pinouts. Okay, this is what I was looking for. I'm like, I want to build one of these at home if I'm going to do anything. Yeah. So you can get the uh, schematic in PDF form because everybody there loves PDFs. And yeah. uh, the text, and we do have a pinout. All right, so we can there make we one go. of these. Yeah. We can make one of these. All right, that's what I wanted to know. Just in case, yes, you know, yes. you weren't content to go check a 404 page each and every day until something's Yeah. <laughs> And let's be honest, I mean, this thing's going to be Raspberry Pi 0W, which every time I do that, I'm like, I have one of those new in the box that I've not done. Oh, okay, I tried to do a little bit with it. Uh, I did one stream, and we just had no success whatsoever to, like, turn it into mm. uh, a webcam, to do, like, a V2 webcam, and it just wasn't having it. But, yeah, those things are cheap, and you can still buy them, you know? They're, like, I think they're a little more expensive now, but I think they were, like, 12 15 bucks, something like that. Yeah. So if you want a yeah. pie that goes beep, but not boop, there we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Jill Bryant, yeah. we've stayed our time. So we, we did. We made it through power outages <laughs> and thunderous uh, thunder and uh, bright lightning. So this is <laughs> at what this is what I want. I want stealth lightning. We need to invent lightning that doesn't make a sound. Let's roll some credits for these people. Ah, okay. Yay! Stealth lightning. That's the stuff you get in the house when you electrocute yourself. We have so many people to thank, including Nubbin, who has increased his pledge. Thank you again, Nubbin. I gotta update uh Advisors are Theron. <laughs> oh, you gotta update him in yeah, the credits. Yeah, so you normally like my turnaround <laughs> times like three weeks apparently, so he, everyone keep reminding oh, yeah. me. yeah. He needs a Chicago uh, a credit there. <laughs> Chicago level credit. <laughs> Chicago kicks pizza, maybe? Don't kick pizza, man. What do you get against pizza? <laughs> What's pizza ever done to you? Incite violence and rage on a delicious uh, edible cheese plate. Episode Yay. 382, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for showing up. Thank we'll see you, you again all. Next week. <laughs> Yay, we have oh, merch back. Right. <laughs>